Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and every non-binary people in the room. I'm here to talk about my LARP, Witches of Asta Farm. I'm also a radical feminist and a LARP organizer. And I organized a women-centric LARP together with my friend Linda Rosengren. A whole LARP based on a dream. Now, I don't mean a dream as in a lofty ideal one holds in high regards. No, I mean an actual falling unconscious and hallucinating through the night dream. The name of the LARP became Witches of Asta Farm, and it took exactly one year to go from dream to not reality, but LARP. Besides LARPing, I'm also into Second World War reenactment, and through this, I learned about the internment of Japanese Americans in March 1942, following the attack on Pearl Harbor. 63% of those internees were American citizens. Having this knowledge impacted the whole main theme of the LARP. Internment of your own citizens after deciding that they are a possible threat and doing this for their own sake, but also for the sake of us all. My dream. I knew that I was in a Swedish internment camp for witches and that the year was 1941. I also knew that I was part of a five-woman work detail led by a butch lesbian in Dundarees, who had been bullying me to tears while we were all cleaning the library. I knew that having strong negative emotions caused wear and tear on a magical rune I was wearing on my left arm, which subdued my magical abilities. And I had to get to the healers to have my rune renewed before anyone else saw my weakened rune. As I hurried across the stone-covered driveway, I heard a town car pull up, and I looked that way and saw two nicely dressed British diplomats step out, and then I woke up. I described my vivid dream on my own Facebook page and in, LARP, and in LARP Women Unite, and got a strong positive reception of the dream as a LARP setting. Within a couple of days, I had decided I would do this LARP, and it was going to be women-centric, something that I had wanted to do for years. The genres would be magical realism, women in prison, and alternative history. There are many LARPs about war, but fewer about the experiences of women in times of war, and I had friends who had expressed a wish, a wish for this. The focus of women in prison, looking for players in women-centric forums, and rewriting history to allow for female military guards, all helped make the majority of the players female. The guard thing was that so we would not end up with male characters with a violence monopoly guarding mainly female characters. We also said that small children, younger than 18 months, were very welcome to the game and would be accommodated for free. This helps because in the real world, we still have the gender roles in which the care of very small children often fall on the mother. I asked Linda to team up with me, and soon we had a venue, a very reasonable priced 4-H farm named Asta. Now we need to find out what kind of characters one would play, and we decided on witches, those who were interned, healers, a kind of lesser witch who took care of controlling the witches magically, guards and administration who controlled the witches physically, but also protected them from outside threats. Medical, who were supposed to look to the witches' health, but instead experimented upon them. Diplomats, two British diplomats with a goal to identify Brits and British descendants among the witches and bring those home to the UK. Kitchen and caretakers, who were mostly volunteers who cooked. The strongest themes were the internment of citizens for no other crime than being them, the involuntary modification of the bodies of others to fit in with society, and how the others still mobilize resistance and strives to find a way out. 
the internment of people for no other crime than being themselves. The reasons the witches were surrounded up was because witches had been used as weapons of mass destruction in World War I. To prevent this from happening again, Sweden decided to inter all registered witches, the vast majority, when a new war was a fact in 1939. The witches of the Lark was, of course, symbols. They symbolized, among others, the disabled, who in Sweden were put in lar large institutions and experimented upon. The mentally so-called retarded, women with social stigma who lived in poverty, who were sterilized by the state, sex workers put in rehabilitation that was nothing but work camps, communists who were sent to work camps during the war, and transsexual individuals who were still sterilized in Sweden up until recently. All these individual stories of human beings through the ages who had their potential, autonomy, and self-worth denied them. The involuntary modification of the bodies of the others to fit in with society. In the real world, this is about sterilization, castration, and lobotomies. In the witches of Asta Farm universe, the witches were temporarily cut off from their use of magic by a barrier surrounding the farm, which resonated with a rune imprint on their left arm. Both of these were developed by the state, but done by a kind of lesser witch called a healer. These were not fully accepted by the witch community, but seen as a resource by the state because of other abilities. They were the go-between needed for enough understanding of the other to be able to properly contain them. The barrier is a symbol of the isolation that comes from living your whole life in an institution. And the rune on the arm, all kinds of subdu subduing techniques, such as heavy sedatives, violence, physical restraints, or economic and social control. During the LARP, an illegal experiment was run by the medical personnel to find a more permanent way to cut a witch off from her magic, a parallel to sterilization or a lobotomy. How the others who are us still mobilizes resistance and strives to find a way out. Any oppressed group will strive for freedom from oppression. I believe this to be a human quality and a human right. When it comes to the witch, there is a strong history of connecting her to the devil as her helper, confidant, and even lover. Our witches belong to one of three faiths. The Christian witches follow the state religion, and in doing so, have the strongest connection to the Swedish church, which in our universe had reformed its views on witches and protested their internment. Those of a traditional witch faith who found their strength in the ritual of archaic womanhood and nature, digging deep into Nordic myths older than Christianity, and the satanic witches, who would call on Satan to help them in this time of need, and during the LARP also decided to do so in a ritual on Saturday night evening, All Hallows' Eve, and gave him the soul of the weakest witch to feed on. In doing so, they betrayed the collective as the satanic witches were the symbol of the oppressed who to save themselves step on someone else further down the ladder. There were many individual stories on how the witches tried to wriggle their way free from the farm, get out of the anti-magic circle. This despite the motto of the LARP, that it was for their own sake for the sake of us all. Thank you. <laughs>